Hello folks and welcome back to Sound Codex. This video is an introduction to a free sampler called TX16YX, which frankly speaking it's a great sampler full of customization settings. Uh, it has a lot of features and what I like most about it is that if you want to do very simple things like just play your drum parts or your sample with no tweaking it's relatively easy to do so and on the other hand if you want to create your own instrument you want to manipulate and edit sound you can do so and you can achieve even very complex results if you take a look at the manual you'll see that its structure its hierarchy it's pretty complex we have top level banks, then performances, programs, regions. So if you want to understand how it works in detail, take a look at the manual. In this video, I'm going to make things easy, as easy as possible. So we can start talking about the overall user interface. On top, we can see that we have 12 outputs. These are stereo and you cannot change them to mono. If you want to do so, you need to buy the full version, which is called professional version. The version I'm using right now, it's the free one. It's amazing. You have all the things you need to make music. We have a main window. We have a setting window and an FX window, which here it's not enabled since once again, I'm using the free version. On top, we can also define performances. These are higher level program files that store all informations relatively to programs, samples and regions. In the left side, we have a browser window where we can navigate to our samples. If you don't see it, probably it's because it is minimized so simply click on this plus icon here you can navigate to your desired folder both manually so local disk user like this or you can use this drop down menu where you can save your own uh, shortcut folders here drum kit 99 sounds as you can see it has a yellow star so once you reach your desired folder, like this Prodigy drum kit, you simply click on this star and that folder path will be saved inside this drop down menu for a quick access. How and where do we add samples? So in this blank area, right click and add a new slot. The slot is a container that contains a program. This is a simple program I made before. It's called Tutorial Program. It's receiving input from my MIDI device, which is a Launchpad Mini from channel one. And as I press some pads, you'll see that this LED is flashing blue. Its output is set by default to output one, but you can change it according to uh, what you want to do. You have a standard control for mute or solo your program. You have the overall volume settings as well as the stereo panorama. You can finally route the signal using these sends to other outputs and to the FX buses, which are disabled. We can create as many programs as we want, as you can see here. When you have a lot of programs, I suggest you to save this setup as a new performance. So you simply rename this performance, you call it for programs test, something like this, and you save it. For this tutorial, I want to use just a single program, so I can remove all these three. You simply right click on top of the program delete program slot. In this way, you'll get rid of all unused programs. Before diving in each individual sections, which are groups, regions, waves, and sounds, ARP and matrices are uh, disabled in the free version. Let's take a look at these settings. The program can be monophonic or polyphonic. By default, its polyphony count is set to null, so it's a monophonic sampler. 
if you want to increase this value, you can double click on it and increase the number of maximum voices. You can transpose all audio files associated to this program using this number box and you can fine tune it as well. Let's start talking about the first section, which is group. So each program has a group tab, which contains groups that are useful to organize your content. So by default, groups are called new group, I think. We can delete it, delete and add a new one. Yeah, new group. Each group is associated to a specific color. So I can add a new group and as you can see, it changes its color. Thanks to groups, we can define how to trigger sounds, which is a common setting we want to tweak when using a sampler. So when set to normal, we press a key or a pad, and as long as our key is pressed, we'll, we're going to hear the sound. As we release the key, the sound will stop playing. If you want to play the drum parts, I suggest you to use toggle or one shot. You can also define a custom shift or fine tuning for each group, as well for volume and pan. Now let's get rid of these two groups. Now let's move on and talk about the regions. Let's minimize the groups section. Great. Thanks to regions, we can map samples using keys and regions within this MIDI keyboard. So we can navigate to our sample folder and we can something like this and we can play our own sound. By default, the autoplay icon is turned off, so I suggest you to turn it on if you want to listen to uh, each sample as you click on top of it. Before moving on, we need to change a crucial setting. Every time we pre-listen an audio file, our DO is going to generate our sampler is going to generate cache files. These are by default stored within the actual sample library we're using, and this is going to make our sample folder a complete mess. Something like this. So to avoid that, move under the settings tab, scroll down until you see alternate wave peak cache path, and here you can enter your own folder where you can save these peak cache files. Then make sure that place wave peaks files in alternate cache path is set to always, by default is set to never. Then make sure to click on save settings. We can move back to the main window and now we can import a few audio files. You simply drag and drop them in the region tab and here we have our audio file. As you can see, each audio file is now listed here and we can access to its position. As we can see, the first sample is associated to key C4, so C4, C4, low key, high key. The next one C sharp 4, C sharp 4, and so on. Thanks to this behavior, we can understand that we can extend the region. So let's say that I want to play the first sample starting from C4 up to C4. What I can also do is I can turn on the transposition using the root option. Let's say that our root value is at C4. So as I play keys before our C4, I'm going to hear the same audio file transposed. This option is very useful if you want to play melody, uh, sampling synth parts, for instance. As you can see, we can extend the region of each sample. What's cool about 
the TX16 is that we can overlay different samples. So let's take this second audio file, which is a kick sound. Let's make this region bigger and let's try to overlap this region to the previous one by simply moving it back. When we press this key, we're going to hear the kick alone. This one, the cymbal sound. If we press a key in the middle, we're going to hear both of them. We can also arrange samples in a way that we can play a specific sample depending on the input velocity. We can say that the symbol can be played only if the velocity is 61. If the velocity is less than 61, so it goes from 0 to 60, low velocity, high velocity, we're going to hear the kick only. I'm using a Launchpad Mini, which has no uh, velocity. So this is going to produce uh, only one sound. But that's a really cool feature. Within this table, we have a few interesting options that are the mode, how the sampler is going to load and read the audio files. The default mode is set to DFD. Using this mode, the sampler is going to read each audio file from disk. The other options are RAM and WT. You can learn more about each mode in the manual. Uh, the other one I'm going to talk is the RAM mode. As the name suggests, each time you load a sample in the sampler, it will load that sample in the RAM memory. My suggestion is to use the DFD mode most of the time if you want to perform precise timing with rhythmical patterns with drum kits you can opt for the RAM mode. Then we have uh, standard settings like we can reverse the audio file, we have uh, attenuation for each individual sample, stereo panorama, shift and fine tune. Each time we import an audio file, we can also display its waveform. And for, for longer audio file, we can also cut and slice the audio file. So I'm going to use this classic remastered drum and bass sample pack. So I can drag and drop this sample within the waves view we can slice our sample. We can define a number of slices, like 16. We press Enter and we toggle this slice sample into even parts. Now, as we press on each slice, we're going to listen that uh, chunk of audio. At the very bottom of Waves tab, we have a table with two sections, Waves, which is the actual list of all audio files and loops and ranges. Here we can find all slices. Let's make it bigger. As we can see, 16 slices. Now, if I want to import my slices inside the regions, I can simply select my audio files. Make sure to toggle this icon which enable root key based or fixed key mapping. As the tooltip suggests, when this icon is turned on, root keys are ignored and all samples are placed at equidistant ranges. Now we can drag and drop our chunk of audio here. And using a piano roll, we can write notes so that we can reassemble and create glitchy or uh, stuttered rhythms based on this drum break. Now let's say that our slices are not perfectly in time. We can zoom in and we can move manually each section. 
Finally, we have the sounds tab. So by default, it should have an empty tab called new sound. If you move under groups, you'll see then your group. It's associated to the sound tab called new sound, which is the empty one. We can rename it by double clicking on top of its name and we can call it whatever we want, shape sound. Here we have a lot of tools to shape and edit our audio content. We can start from an amplitude envelope generator, AEG. It's a pretty standard ADSR envelope. We have control over each point. We can define attack, decay, sustain and release time. And we can change the curve slope using these CRV controls. And we also have kind of generic parameters like volume, pan, velocity. We can define the starting position of our envelope. We can define a glide in milliseconds and a delay. Then we have a filter section. It has two filters, a BQuad filter and a state variable filter. The effects section, it's disabled. And finally, we have an unison. We can create copies of the same audio, creating a sort of chorus or phaser effects. From the filter section, you have access to standard controls like cutoff frequency, resonance. You can define the type of filter you want to use, like low pass. You can define its slope. And what's cool about it is that you have a, an overdrive at the end of the filter section. Then we have two modulation sources. The first one is made by two LFOs, LFO1 and LFO2. Then we have envelope. This is a generic envelope with uh, control over four stages. As we can see, we have a release, we have a sustain, we have a decay, we have an attack. As we've seen for the AEG, we can change the curve slope and its timing. And we have three sequences. You can select how many steps you want to have, and you can draw steps by holding your left mouse click. You can define the rate at which these steps are read by the sampler. You can define the overall amplitude, a fade in time, and how to sync these steps to the key, to the group, to the voice or known. Each sequence comes with pre-built uh, shapes like sinus, triangle, sawtooth, square and exponent. Once your modulation source is set, you need to root it from your starting point, your source, let's say I want to use my ENV1 to control the pitch. So my source is ENV1, my destination is pitch. And here I can define the amount of modulation. Now let's turn on the regions. Let's tweak this parameter. We want our envelope to shape a sort of fade in uh, effect for the pitch. So we can start from negative values. We can set the first value to 0%, which is normal playback speed, as well for the second point and this one as well. We can set in arbitrary 500 um, uh, value for the amount. And let's have a listen. Finally, your first program is ready, everything is working fine, so I suggest you to save your program and why not save your performance as well. I hope this video was useful for you, if so, I invite you to leave a thumbs up and subscribe to support my channel. As always, thank you for watching and I'll see you in a future video.